Doesn't that look like a season's numbers for some quarterbacks? Wow, and that's two games. Unbelievable. Well, and the numbers just keep on coming for Colt Brennan. Ten touchdowns so far this year. Four touchdowns last week in the overtime win against Louisiana Tech. First snap from Strings for the Heisman Trophy front run, and he'll try to dump it out to Leon Wright Jackson. Incomplete on his first attempt. Elton Shackelford looked like he got a piece of that. Starting lineups are brought to you by Sinclair Oil, as American as it gets. John Estes, the center from Stockton, California, in there. And, well, there they are, the guys catching the balls from Colt Brennan. Got some good ones. Grice Mullen, Jason Rivers, and Devon Best had a triple-triple last week. Three guys, each going into triple digits. They will get theirs during the course of this night. Just can this UNLV defense stiffen from time to time just enough to help. Second down, the shuttle pass back to Wright Jackson across the 30. He's hit hard, bottled up first by Star Fuimano. And then coming to clean it up is Jacob Hales. Let's meet that UNLV Rebel defense. Again, brought to you by Sinclair Oil, Jeremy Gathers. Zero sacks this year. He was third in the conference last year with total five and a half sacks. Quentin Poyer, who made the opening kickoff on, uh, tackle on the kickoff, will start in that dime package. And there you see the rest of the defensive backs. Pointer is a freshman, as is Shane Horton, number 21, the safety. So two freshmen getting thrown to the wolves here of Colt Brennan in Hawaii, the Warriors, and a third and four coming up. In motion is C.J. Hawthorne. He'll line up at the bottom of your screen. Pass is to Hawthorne. He's up near the stick, and they will mark it. Good for a first down. Daryl Forte on the coverage. Looks to be just a half yard past the marker. I think that what he did, though, the, James, is that I think in battling for some extra yards, he may, he may have come up. Well, I thought he was a little bit short. This is generous. Now, right there, he's got the first down. Now, when he battles and goes backwards and gets thrown out of bounds. Thanks to Mouton's 29-yard return. Brandon and the Warriors, their second drive will start at the 34. Pass goes out to Grice Mullen. Ryan Grice Mullen, the junior out of Rialto, California. 11 touchdowns last year, and Star Fuimano, the Rebel linebacker, getting over there and pulling him down. Grice Mullen already in two games, 18 catches for 292 yards and three touchdowns. And he's the guy that can get it up the field. I think that one of the things that they wanted to emphasize defensively. I know that Vic Sheedy pointed out that these are the sorts of throws that they want to give up. Those six, seven yarders and get a chance to collide with people. They just don't want to give up what he referred to as explosion plays, which means those plays that are 15 yards or more. Leon Wright Jackson with the shift. And the draw goes to Jackson. Inside, a good block down the field by Keone Steinhoff, the junior out of Eva Beach, Oahu. Hey, here's one for you, James. You, uh, you might know the answer to this. Do you know how many how many rushes that is now for Hawaii in these first two games? Twelve? Is it twelve <laughs> That's now? That's the 12th time they've run, but they've already thrown the ball 126 times. Is that, uh, so they're not exactly reinforcing the point that the run sets up the pass, are they? Make that 130 times. It was 126 coming in, wasn't okay, it? And, and a couple of those runs were when Gronky, the backup quarterback, yeah. was in there in That's the first right. game. with the pressure from Devers. He'll tuck it and try to get a couple across midfield. A good pickup on first down for Brennan. Let's get down to Toby. Well, I just thought it was funny you guys were talking about the rushes that this team has had. It's interesting to note that that was actually the seventh rush for their leading rusher on the season. So coming into this game, their leading rusher actually had six carries. <laughs> I just thought that was pretty funny, guys. Well, and, and Toby, I was talking to their, their new SID, Derek, who's done an excellent job following this crew around the country. And I asked him, I said, you know, I didn't see Leon Wright Jackson on the depth chart. And he goes, oh, we just do it by seniority there. It's like those running backs, they don't matter too much. <laughs> but, but, but Leon they, Wright they Jackson want to hear that. is that leading rusher. You're right, Toby. David Farmer in the backfield now with Brennan. Steps up in the pocket and lets it go right on target. Another first down for the Warriors again to Grice Mullen. Here's the difference sometimes between the inexperienced quarterback that you have with UNLV and the experienced quarterback with Hawaii. Watch as he looks. He goes two different places. Now, instead of bailing out, he steps up. He doesn't take off. He's able to deliver the ball. Grice Mullen moves within that zone to give him that opportunity. This is great footwork. 
I heard that his footwork was very average. That was a tremendous job of moving his feet, stepping up in the pocket, and delivering the ball on the money. That has been one knock on Brennan, his mechanics. And while his footwork was good, he did sling that one sidearmed, and he hasn't had a lot of balls batted down because of that. Gets this one off the Hawthorne. C.J. Hawthorne, the senior out of Gulfport, Mississippi. You know, if you talk to June Jones, June Jones will tell you that we are patient. You know, the young, the receivers, of course, want to get the big plays, but there's a man who can drive you 80 yards. He's not afraid of that because he knows that that's what the run and shoot can do. This is the other thing he'll emphasize, and that, that some people think is a misnomer regarding the run and shoot, and that is it is ball control. It does control the ball. They're able to get it down the field incrementally or in big chunks. Warriors doing just that on this drive. Their second drive of the night, a second down and two here. David Farmer in the backfield with Brennan. And again, he goes to that near sidelines. And again, it's complete. One more time to C.J. Hawthorne. Milvon James, the left cornerback, transfer out of UCLA on the coverage. Well, what this does is this does set up an out and up. I believe this is the third time now that they've gone to that side with that particular route. And of course, you know, you do. You have to play off. You know, Milvon James is there. Great job with the feet. First down for the Warriors. An eight-yard gain. Bryce Mullen, C.J. Hawthorne, Jason Rivers, Devon Best. The four stud receivers for this Warrior offense. June Jones said that's a better package of receivers than I ever had in the NFL. And he coached some great ones. Hand off inside to Polaris. He spotted him. A short gain of maybe one. They're on first down. Bo Bell in his first stop of the night. I, I was just thinking to myself, James, you and I have done a number of Air Force games. And this is the polar opposite. This is the antithesis of the old Air Force offense, which is, of course, they ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball. And then, of course, when they did with that one play action, it was a big play. In the case of Hawaii, they throw the ball so much that you would think that when you do run the ball, they're going to get a big play. But Bo Bell said no. Absolutely. A good open field tackle. He could have gone anywhere. There's a lot of room to wiggle there. And Bo Bell staying right at home, not getting lulled to sleep. Second down and long. Now, again, handoff inside to Polaris. <laughs> Shane Horton, the true freshman, on the stop. A pickup here of six yards, so a third down and short coming up. Well, here's Bo Bell. You just talked about him. He tries to fill the gap, and again, he's at his unfamiliar middle linebacker position. He overruns the play, and as a result, that's a pretty good pickup for Polaris, and now it's third and only about two and a half. Bo Bell, who's moved to that middle linebacker slot. In this nickel package, a third down and two. Plenty of time for Brennan, right on target again. It's complete and down inside the five-yard line. Bo Bell, Shane Horton on the stop, and the first time we've seen Jason Rivers with his hands on the ball tonight. Here's the confidence you have when you're Brennan. Watch him look to the, your left, and now he comes completely across the field. That's a difficult throw. He has to throw that through two hash marks. It's a great job after the catch, but Brennan looks people off, now comes back against the grain. One of the discussions regarding Brennan at the next level is his arm strike. Look pretty good right there. His offensive line, the guys up front, and look good protecting for him there. And James, too. sitting next to us up here in the booth, I, I'm, I'm counting probably at least a dozen scouts that are here to see number 15. First and goal. Handoff goes to Farmer, doesn't get in. Second down and goal coming up. Big David Farmer lunging forward, the junior out of Santa Cruz. Now, supposedly, this is the weakness of the run and shoot, James, and that is, is that they don't have necessarily the elephant group. When they have all those wide receivers, they don't have that extra blocker. But again, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm always surprised as how people want to rise to the occasion when people, somebody tells them they can't do anything. June Jones has a couple 300-pounders right there along the offensive line, and he wants a timeout. Cool. June Jones running out onto the field. We saw this at the other end of the field in the red zone from Mike Sanford, and June Jones will get that first time. I'm out. Hawaii. So two Media timeout. It's important. Got to get these points and answer. That's what it's all about tonight, answering that bell. 
Hawaii businesses know recruiting and retaining employees is a crucial element in running a successful business. Offering a solid benefits package definitely helps attract and keep good employees. That's where Benefit Services of Hawaii can help. For over 20 years, we've been providing employee... Sun's going down in Vegas, and Colt Brennan and the Warriors trying to go right down the field and answer a second down and goal from the one. For Brennan's offense, Farmer lined up directly behind the quarterback. That's in motion. Behind that big offensive line, and they do answer. On the board for the first time tonight, the Warriors on the ground. Colt Brennan in from one yard out. Seems appropriate that he would get the touchdown because he was certainly the catalyst of this drive. Seven for eight, 54 yards. And here's the interesting point, James. The defensive coordinators for UNLV are saying, you know, we want to make him drive. We want him to go the length of the field. Well, that's exactly what they did. 11 plays. Team, You want to get all the yards you can. Absolutely a 40-yard punt there for Pacheco. And one more time, here comes Colt Brown. Swings one out to Bess, down the sideline, across the 40-yard line, across the 45, finally brought down by Daryl Forte. Big pickup on first down for the Warriors. Here's what ends up happening with the inexperience of the defense. We'll get a chance to show that when he looks to the one side and then the receivers head to one side, watch what's going to happen. You're going to see receivers go over here, and then you're going to see everybody go in this direction. The veteran quarterback comes up, looks back, and Bess is just completely untouched. He was able to get lost. He breaks a tackle, and now he heads up field. That's the inexperience of this defense, and one of the, one of the difficulties, I know they're terrific athletes, James, but sometimes when you're going with two freshmen in the secondary, they're going to try and read the eyes of the quarterback, and that's the wrong guy to try and read the eyes of. Smiling eyes on Colt Brennan right now, and for good reason. Big Devon Best, 5'10", 195-pound junior out of Oakland. At the receiving end of that 29-yarder, all the damage done on the run. We've got a good one here, tied at seven. That's the end of one. To ah, no place we'd rather be than right here on the mountain in Sam Boyd Stadium with you tonight. Sevens on the board. Lucky sevens. Hawaii and UNLV tied after one quarter. 15 to go in the first half, and it's a handoff. Polaris gets to the corner, turns it north and south, and that's a first down pickup as he crosses the 40-yard line. Daryl Forte forcing him out. Didn't quite make the 40, rather, but still enough for a first down. Watch Jason Rivers. It's clear that the receivers here for Hawaii are not used to blocking much. Watch number 84 just to the right of your screen. There's a hole. He's kind of kind of shielding him there. He's not quite sure what to do. Oh, you know what? I'll just get in his way. That's good. And that was enough to get him the first down. <laughs> they don't block too he's, much. He's big enough to get in somebody's way. 6'2", 190 pounder. Brennan, 8 for 9, 83 yards. His long coming, the last play of the first quarter to Devon Best of 29. There's a shovel pass underneath. There's a good way to pick up some easy yardage. To the sideline, across the 10. Diving, doesn't quite get in. Stepped out at the 1. Polaris is forced out by the freshman, Quinton Pointer. A 41-yard gain on the shovel pass from Brent. Daryl Forte makes a bad decision here. Number eight comes out of the secondary. Watch right here. He's going to come up and just get completely juked. He overruns the play, and as a result, that enables him to get to the outside. And Polaris just steps out of bounds before he can get over for the touchdown. But if he doesn't get juked on that play, it's about a seven or eight-yard gain. Not the, not the big gain that it is here to set up Hawaii for its second TD. Well, Brennan has thrown a touchdown pass in 28 consecutive games, but they keep getting the ball down on the one-yard line. He ran it in from one yard out at the other end in the first quarter to give the Warriors their seven points. The handoff to Farmer lowers his hat. Does he get in? No, he doesn't. I'm not much there from Star Fuimano waiting on it. He did, but you know what? It appeared to me that in that first part he was able to get over and got shoved back. If we get a chance to take another look at it, I thought he was over. And by the way, number 48, can he be anything but a fullback with that number? Seriously. You have to be a fullback with number 48. Maybe a backup linebacker. Backup linebacker or, or backup tight end. 
That was 46, for goodness sake. So I, <laughs> I understand those nondescript numerals. Bucky Betcher playing Bucky another Betcher. whack team, the Wyoming Cowboys Stop up there at it. Boise. Again, Brennan behind Brennan. the big guys up front, and again into the end zone from one yard out. Two rushing touchdowns for Brennan. And Hawaii is on top, 13 to 7. Well, for those of you, those of you so-called geeks out there that are big on fantasy, I realize that in this case he's not getting touchdown passes. But at, at the Khalid yards from the end zone to open this drive with 11:30 left to go in the first half. Plenty of time for Brennan sits in there strong, right on the money. To his receiver, Jason Rivers, Forte on the coverage of first down pickup and inside the red zone. The pass protection was outstanding. The people up front, again, you know, you got Asun Satele, Estes, Sawafea, and Steinhoff who give him that pocket. And again, the veteran quarterback, the veteran quarterback hangs in there. You know, the colors are around him. He looks, he looks, bides his time, and puts the ball right on the money. That's the composure of somebody who's been around the block a little bit. Number 15. It, it, it hasn't dissuaded me any. James, I watched a lot of the games today. I, I like this guy. I really do. Talk about composure. I like the way you ran off that list of names up front. I just had a bunch of 300-pounders earlier. <laughs> I choked. Here's Brennan again on first down. Little more pressure this time. Makes it happen with his feet. He's very creative and a great open field tackle by Bo Bell to save a touchdown, perhaps a gain of four yards. What are the chances in this football game would you have mentioned that I would bring up the name Mikhail Barishnikov? But check it out. It's checked up here yet. Beautiful. <laughs> 360s back and cuts up the field. But I tell you what, Bo Bell showed a lot of foot speed running him down. He was on the other side of the field. That's a pretty good play by number two to hold him to only a four yard game. Bell came into this game leading the Rebels with 19 tackles. And Barishnikov was before your time. Sorry, James. No, I know Barishnikov. Okay. okay. If I'd have gone, in, if I, if I'd gone with Nuria, that would have been really confusing. Here's Polaris wrapped up and thrown down for a loss by Jacob Hales, the junior from right here in Las Vegas. Transfer from Southern Utah where he started his college. Jim Jones had to second guess himself on that one. That's great penetration. But again, they go to the weak side where they don't have a strength. He's able to make the penetration behind the block. And of course, that's a bad decision too on the whole on the part of Polaris. Third down and 10. Warriors have to take it to the three yard line for a first down. Brennan will roll out to buy some time. Ruffs it up there for his receiver. Bryce Mullen jumps up, pulls it down. Touchdown, Warriors. Right over the top of Quinton Corner. And it's like a feeding frenzy over there on that Hawaii sidelines. The Sharks are happy. Well, here's part of the problem, James, as you see. He's going to break contain, and then Pointer's got to make a decision. What do I do? Do I come up and make the run, or do I come back and play? This is one thing that I think is underrated about Brennan. Maybe he's not a great runner, but he does a great job with the feet. And this is a nice touch pass. I'm head coach of the Houston Oilers and defensive coordinator for Atlanta. He's the head coach now for the Vikings. How about this throw? Colt Brennan in the air, showing the arm strength and getting it off to Grice Mullen. Ryan Grice Mullen, there is a flag down on the play, and this one's coming back. A holding will be called on the Warriors. Boy, how about the, just the way he creates the instinctiveness of this quarterback, Colt Brennan? Well, I'd be interested. I'd be interested, in Toby, as a former wide receiver, his vantage point and what the confidence is when you get to play with a quarterback like that. Get to run some of those routes and, and just take off downfield. Holding, 73 on the offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Toby, I'm curious. I'm curious what the feeling is when you got a quarterback that's a magician like this that can run around. It's got to give you a lot of confidence as a receiver. Absolutely. You never give up on a route when you got somebody like that. And even if you think you might be a little bit covered, you've got a guy with that kind of confidence who you know is willing, even if you just got a foot, to put the ball in there. That's a lot of fun for a wide receiver. You never give up on a play, and there's always a chance that that ball could be laid right in your hands, especially with someone as accurate as him. Polaris, the back in the backfield next to Brennan. Here goes the quick wide receiver screen underneath with this one. At the C.J. Hawthorne, a short pickup on second down, or bringing up a second down and long, rather. 
Well, the numbers just continue to pile up for Colt Brennan. Oh, and here's another number. He, he said another first tonight. Yeah. The first time he's had two rushing touchdowns in one game. I, there have been times in the past, and, and I would have to say that Timmy Chang was one of those. I thought he was an okay quarterback, but I thought the run and shoot really made him. I don't think that's the case with Colt Brennan. I think he's a very, very good quarterback. 17,072 yards for Chang in his career. Devon Best with the catch. A big pickup across the 20, up near the 25-yard line. Jeff Howard, the junior out of San Diego, on the coverage. So a third down coming up, and it's a big one for this Rebel defense. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, he's still only the one incompletion, right? You're close to the stat board. T take a look. Correct. Brennan is now 12 of 13, 163 yards in that one touchdown. The long, wow. the 41-yarder, the shovel pass to Polaris. The uh -huh. set-up touchdown number two. James, James, I played with quarterbacks at the professional level that weren't 12 for 13 in skeleton or against air. <laughs> you couldn't go out in the parking lot and get those kind of numbers, exactly. could you? Two for three on third down, the Warriors. Off the end comes Beauchamp. They force Brennan out of there. He dives to the 30, gets across the 30. Looks to be enough for a first down, but it will be close. Thor Peely on the stop. I think he's going to be a little bit short. And again, depends on the generosity. Well, I thought that was a little bit of a generous measurement. Once again, you've got now the... You know, the Frank Summers factor, that <laughs> that perpendicular thing to the ground, if we get a chance to see it again, I'm not sure that his knee didn't hit down closer to the 30. But as those who are watching this game are cognizant, this is an inexact science. If ever there's an inexact science in football, it has to be that, marking that ball. Well, a science that works out in the favor of the Hawaii Warriors. A first down pickup on the ground for Brennan. Let's take a peek as he stretches out. There's Peely pulling okay, him down. There's the, see, the knee is down there. There's the, there's the difference. Watch the knee go down before the arm goes forward. His knee's down right there, right at the 30-yard line. He stumbles forward. But as I say, you know, in the course of the game, when there's movement, sometimes you don't get that right. Break for the rainbows in that situation. Big Bo Bell, the senior. Looking to come up with a big stop for this defense. Can they get a turnover? Hawaii turned it over four times last week. Brennan way up top. C.J. Hawthorne can't run under it. Incomplete on first down. They had what they wanted. They had Hawthorne to the post, and it appeared to me that he needed to break over just a little bit. You know, he had all of the grass, and that's what Brennan is pointing out. Going to be coming right at you on the post route. Brennan's anticipating that he's going to cross the field, but he continues to go straight. Doesn't bend in quite enough. Again, I'm not, I'm not blame, blaming it on Hawthorne, certainly. I think it's well within reality that Brennan didn't have as great a throw as he has the last time when he only had the one incompletion. Kialoha Polaris next to Brennan in the backfield. Here comes the pressure because the screen was on right into the hands of Polaris in completion number three Elton Shackelford with the pressure and right into the bread basket of the freshman Polaris boy he would have had some ground right there to go uh, not not Brennan's favorite take a look down here at the bottom and you're gonna see the gap that he had he just lobs it look at it. not even a spiral goodness sakes you're right James he had a oh, not even a, you don't even see a red shirt in the picture he may be on the strip by now, still running behind those big bodies. <laughs> no red jerseys in sight. So again, a third down and ten. Fulimano <laughs> with the blitz. Polaris picks him up. Here comes Gethers. Kick pulling down, but Bo Bell does. The Reds get the stop on third down. Jeremy Gethers in there as well for his first sack of the season. There is a yellow flag on the field, though. Brennan scrambles around and he's not able to get it. But it, it appears because their offense is coming back on the field that this is going against this is going against UNLV. And how frustrating is that? That's got to be depressing. You do so well, you finally you, you finally come with six. You sack the quarterback. 
Dead ball, personal foul, number 14, late hit after the quarterback was on the ground. Automatic first down. You know what, James, James, I didn't comment on that because I wasn't quite sure. But I, again, take a look at the end of the play. He's down. Now, Fuyamano. Oh, that's no, a terrible no, that's call. not. I'm with you. You know what? I think the reason for the call is his excitement and the gesticulations that he has while he's on the ground. Sometimes those histrionics will persuade you that he's doing something dirty. He wasn't. He was just excited. Well, that's it. That, Wow, that's yeah. unfortunate. Fuimano should have gotten, gotten credited there with a J-O-P jump on pile. Instead, he gets a right. flag thrown that's, his way, just laying down basically on top of Brennan, pulled himself up. It's not like he led with the helmet, but a fresh set of downs for the Warriors. They go to the ground with Polaris. He's got a blocker up front leading the charge of Sawafaya. And, and James, it's, <laughs> it's not as if this offense needs any help. Absolutely. That's too bad. You want to get him off the field. That would have been the second time here in the first half. They would have sh shut him down. It was a three and out. The opening drive. Star Fuimana was in on that stop. Strong safety type athlete. The sophomore. Big future for the Rebel backer. For UNLV. Second and seven. See the time running now under 150. No pressure. Wow, nice route and throwing it to him. Perfect timing. Jeffrey Howard on the coverage. It's Jason Rivers on the catch one more time. I mention that because usually teams, when they get under, under two minutes, you can get that sense of urgency. But since their entire offensive program is in their two-minute set with four wide receivers, they don't feel compelled to do that at all. And I'm anxious to get into this conversation, you know, the, the preparation for a team like this as this game goes on because... You do have to have a lot of DBs in this day and age in college yeah, football because everything is so spread out. It's not that conventional run game, and then all no. of a sudden you're shocked with the running shoot, but it is different still. Another Good third point. down here. Three of four on third down conversions for Brennan and the Warriors. They bring the blitz again. Brennan dancing with those feet, makes a couple moves, dives, but he won't get the first down again of one. Cornerbacks, the UNLV coaches, Vic Shealy, the defensive coordinator, are very high on. They've got their hands full with Brennan in this offense. Here goes Bryce Mullen, Ryan Bryce Mullen to the right side, forced out of bounds, but not before picking up what appears to be a first down across midfield. You know what, James, if you are true freshman cornerbacks, I don't care how athletic you are, this is not the game to begin. This is... This is a tough, tough game to begin as a freshman against uh, arguably the best quarterback in the nation. And of course, that triumvirate of receivers that are just tearing it up here early in the season have great careers. It's just, it's a lot to ask. Well, Rivers, Grice, Mullen, and Bess coming into this game accounted for 741 of the team's 1,088 yards. A triple-triple for the trio last week and throw C.J. Hawthorne into the mix, who had the catch on the play before. And you've got a pretty good receiving crew. First down for Brennan. He's hit as he hands it off to Wright Jackson. Wright Jackson dancing across the 40-yard line. Another first down pickup. Forte finally forcing him down to the turf. Brennan pays a price for this. He rolls to his right and does the shovel pass. Actually, that was originally known as the Utah pass. I don't know if you knew that. Right there, Gethers drops him. And now before he's able to get the ball off, he bounces up. He's resilient. I, I, he, you know what? He reminds me an attitude a little bit. Of, uh, remember Jim McMahon? Yep. He reminds me an attitude a little bit like that, minus the head bumping with the lineman. But, of course, you know, the linemen just love this guy, and they'll do whatever they can to protect him. I'm sure Gene Jones insists. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have him back. Another wide receiver screen. This one underneath the Jason Rivers. Not quite as much there. Bo Bell waiting on him. The middle linebacker, the senior for the reps. You know, Bo Bell is just a tremendous football player. And, and his chance on Sundays is probably to play the strong side linebacker. You know, where he takes over a tight end and hits some people. But number two is a little bit out of his element here as a middle linebacker. He's... His expertise is not in pass coverage, but he has been all over the field, and I think he has double digits and tackles up to this point, James. Well, they hand out a hard hat award to the blue collar worker on that defense each week, and in weeks one and two, Bo Bell has gone home with it. Trying to get a big stop here, setting up the screen underneath. Gethers read it, but a little bit too late. Into the back, right Jackson, a big pickup down into the red zone. It is number 
number two, Bo Bell, chasing him down from behind, but the damage is done, a huge pickup for the Warriors. Once again, this is what happens. You're trying to sack the guy. They let people go, and he's able to dump the little screen. And again, you know what? We've been complimenting Brennan in terms of his accuracy. Okay, that's justifiable. But let's also compliment some of these people who are making a lot of plays after the catch, getting, the, getting that yak, James. Well, Wright Jackson and Kealoha Polaris filling in for Maui and Ialoa. Two big banks they lost off of last year's team. Brennan, the quick strike. Right on the money and near that first down marker. Depend where they spot it. We'll get it down to Toby real quick. Well, one of the one of the big advantages that we haven't talked one of, that we haven't talked about with uh, Cole Brennan is the fact that he actually speaks Samoan. He took three semesters of Samoan in college to bond with the linemen. You mentioned how the linemen really like him. Well, I guess it's a big advantage when you can say paloka to them, which means block, and alumamao to your receivers, which means go deep. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Toby, didn't you tell me that he also audibled one time in Samoa to confuse some people? That's what I'm saying. Last year he audibled during a game and the coaches loved it. That's great. Well, speaking straight English on this one as he dives into the end zone for his third rushing touchdown of the evening. And the Warriors go right down the field on their opening series of the second half. And it's 27 to 7, just like that. I can tell you that June Jones is not going to use this play too often. Someone that valuable, you don't want running the Back inside Sandpoint Stadium, UNLV trailing by 21 to the Hawaii Warriors. First and 10 for Brennan. He'll pick up maybe one before he's tackled down by Elton Shackelford, the senior out of Salina, Kansas. James, I was entertained by the conversation over on the sidelines between Brennan and June Jones. Evidently, he had the wrong personnel, and he came over and he just said to him, my bad, and started smiling. And June Jones actually broke a smile, too. It's hard not to like number 15, that uh, devil may care attitude. And it trickles down the rest of this team. It, it, is, it is a team that has fun. They play good ball, and when things start clicking for them, a buzz carries through us like a feeding frenzy. And here we go on second down. That one thrown behind Devon. Best does an excellent job of reaching behind his body to even pull it in. Excellent hands. And then he's thrown back what looked to be about a five-yard gain. Turns into a gain of one. But what an amazing catch. Here's an example of why these guys are so good. Well, well again, you know what? It, it isn't all Brennan. We talked about the triumvirate of very good receivers, as Toby pointed out. There he slips and falls and isn't able to maintain his footing. So a third down and eight now. Don't, you know what, James, if they don't convert this, don't put it past and go for it on fourth down anyway. A la Stevie Wonder, Steve Spurrier back in the SEC. Inside wide receiver screen, how about your big bow bell? Number two, meet number two, C.J. Hawthorne on the catch. And waiting for him was the 245-pounder from his middle linebacker spot. You know, this is what, I'm glad you pointed that out, James, because this is one of those situations where you say, hey, buddy, I got your number. Literally, number two collides with number two, and he goes backwards. Bo Bell with the textbook tackle. And sure enough, James, that is what's going to happen. The rainbows are going to go for it on fourth and about six and a half. What could go down is the play of the game for this UNLV Rebel defense. They've got to get off the field and put it back in their offense's hand. Four rocks. There's Brennan. He lets it go and gets it off. Won't be a first down. Jeffrey Howard on the coverage. They put a shellacking on the UCLA Bruins there in Salt Lake City. Here goes Brennan. Aaron it out. Trying to get it to CJ Hawthorne. He comes back and just pulls it down. Milvon James on the coverage, a huge pickup for the Warriors. And you saw Milvon James pound the ground, and a lot of that is because he actually has pretty decent coverage. Hawthorne's got him by a step, but right here, right at the last minute, he comes back for the ball. James doesn't look. Hawthorne does. The result is a completion for the Warriors. I mean, yeah, he, you know what? Right, right there he needs to turn, and he didn't turn soon enough. Hawthorne, good concentration on that ball. As a defensive back, you're taught to watch those eyes. You're right, right in his hip pocket, stride for stride. When those eyes of the receiver get big and pop up, and it's for a reason. Yeah. Got to snap that head around instead. 
It's a first down in UNLV territory for these hard-charging Warriors. Going to the ground with Polaris. Both down with another tackle. I tell you what, you, you got to be impressed with number two. It's not his kind of game. He's a smash-mouth kind of guy. But Polaris and others have felt his wrath. Number two has been hitting some people. When he hits you, it appears, you know, that's, I think, the third or fourth time, James, where we've seen people go backwards despite the fact that they have the momentum in that direction. He's a good-looking football player, number two. Well, and Todd, at 245 pounds, the ability he has in space, the open field tackle yeah. is what impresses me the most. You'd think he'd be a plugger. They would just go in there and fill that gap, but he can tackle these little scat backs in the open field like it's nobody's business. Here's Polaris on the ground. He's met hard by Daryl Forte, the sophomore out of Culver City, California. Something else that we mentioned, you know, they don't run the ball very often. And as a result of that, it's not just it's not just the running backs, but when you have offensive linemen that aren't used to pulling, you know, they're used to taking their steps and pass blocking. The Polaris does a nice job of weaving in and out and getting a couple of yards and setting up a makeable third and about three. Polaris just a freshman. A lot of young guns out there on the field for both squads. Number 21 is 5'11", 190 pounds. Brennan now 24 of 27 for 289 yards through the air. He'll go back to the pass. Almost picked off. Milvon James, a great read and a great break, but he couldn't see up the deal. Oh, that could have been the break, James. We talked about it. The ricochet off the punt return. Does a great job sneaking underneath. One of the few really bad passes Brennan throws right in the bread basket. That's tough. But once again, Hawaii showing their confidence. Fourth and two at the 34-yard line, and they're still going to go for it. You know, most teams are conservative, punted inside the 10, not Hawaii. Polaris, the lone back. In motion there is Ryan Grice Mullen. Rebels showing blitz, here they come. Picked up ball, gets off the best. A first down across the 30, near the 25-yard line. Jeffrey Howard forcing him out of bounds, but not before the first down is picked up. A fresh set of downs for Brennan. Brennan sees it coming. They're going to come with the blitz. Guy comes in motion. It's an easy throw. I think that this is one of the reasons why you don't want to blitz this guy is because he sees it and is just throw and catch. Easy play to the outside. First down for Hawaii. What defense, you know what, at this point, James, after you're a three-year starter in college, you have to say to yourself, what, what, what defense hasn't Brennan seen? Because all sorts of defenses have to be concocted for the run and shoot. You know, especially those defenses waiting there in the wings for the Hawaii Warriors in the whack this season. Here we go on first down, shovel pass to Polaris. Bo Bell, big pop of flag on the ground. Boy, Bo Bell has come from all over this field tonight. Hustling, there's a flag, though. Hold's going to bring it back. And you're right. Watch number two in the bottom of your screen. Come hustling over. You know what? He's not even in the screen yet, and here he comes, flying over there. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a line one time uh, years ago. Holding 62 of the offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Bear Bryant was talking about the great linebacker Leroy Jordan that he had at Alabama, who of course had a great career with the Dallas Cowboys. And one of the lines he said regarding Leroy Jordan, he says, if they stay between the sidelines, Leroy will get them. And I tell you, that really applies to number two, Bo Bell. They stay between the sidelines, that number two will hunt you down. And the thing you don't get to see, Todd, behind that mask, behind that, that helmet, you know, all the, all the gear, is what a good good person he is. Always a big smile on his face, has really become a leader, really took the wind out of this team when he went down yeah. against BYU. You could feel the team almost watch him deflate there in the second series of that BYU game. First and long for Brennan, buys some time, puts it up there. Well, you're right about that, but let me explain something to you about broadcasting, son. That's our job to get to be hindsight. Along with Todd Christensen and Todd Christensen's son, can I just say that? Christensen's son? Uh, uh, Toby Christensen down on the sidelines. I'm James Bates. Glad to have you with us on the mountain tonight. Let me come back, though, to Toby's point, and, this, and that's this. As a receiver, though, Toby, I'd have to say, aren't you cognizant of the people downfield? Don't you have a feel for that and especially when you're running a post 
Okay. Well, well there Brennan gets a oh. drop, and, and you mentioned that the drops, 54 drops yeah. last year, and, and Jim Jones did the work. 73% uh, of his passes were caught Colt Brennan a year ago. Had half of those drops been caught, it would have been 82. Here goes Brennan with a third and long try. Goes way up top, careful, and here come the flag. A ball that was probably uncatchable. Jeffrey Howard runs into the back of the receiver, Jason Rivers, and a first down will, brought, will be a reward in here. You see Mike Sanford do that. It was funny because I happen to have my eyes on the UNLV sideline. <laughs> About 15, 20 people all at the same time gave that motion of the ball over the top. <laughs> as well as the fans. All right. Way to go, young lady. And now she's asking. Did oh, you, yeah, did yeah, you read yeah. her lips? What does this mean? Yeah, what That's what she mean? said, but she wants to be a part of things. Pass interference on the defense. Number eight. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, here's another look at, at what appears to be. Oh, it's, it's, it's way over there. Well. Well, it, you, know, you go and high point it when you're a tall guy like Rivers. It's exactly. Maybe see, you can see it. that's just the that, see that's the argument that an official is always going to give you with regards to that particular play, and that is we wouldn't know, we wouldn't know otherwise. And clearly, that ball, if that was you know, if it's another five feet higher, it's an easy call. But in that case, you just don't know. So you get this Warrior offense, a fresh set of downs as we take a look at the penalty. 72 yards tacked against the Rebels, and here the flags come out one more time. Dead ball, false start, 78 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, we play first down. That's Keone Steinhoff. So back it up five yards at first and 15. Just more room for these Warriors to work. They'll go to the ground. That's right, Jackson. Out the left side. He's met and forced out of bounds after a seven-yard pickup. Jeffrey Howard is called for that interference penalty, forcing him out of bounds. I'm surprised at this. You know, coming into this, coming into this game, pointed out there's 11 carries. They've run a lot tonight. Now that's Sam Nolan, who, who wasn't quite sure what an uncatchable ball signal meant. But you know what she does know? It's the volleyball. This team started 10 and 1, the best in program history. She's a volleyball player here for UNLV. They just beat BYU and Utah. This past weekend, so good reason to celebrate and have a good time. Throw on some eye black and come out to Sam Boyd, right? That's it. So if we just said spike, dig, or kill, she'd have figured that one out, right? In the second. Right Jackson on the ground. He lowers his shoulder up near the sticks. This may be a first down pickup on second down. One of you, the defensive coordinators that are on the schedule for Hawaii, you have to be concerned doubly so now. Clearly, they hadn't established anything in terms of the run of the first two games, but in this game, they've been able to go with a variety of plays, off tackles, some traps, a couple of sweeps. I think that June Jones knew that coming in against the quality of opponent the UNLV was that they would have to do something a little bit more in the running game, and that's exactly what's happened. So shy by a couple lengths, it'll be a third down in less than a yard. Or June Jones. You know what? You know what? You gotta like this too. You, you see that Manila folder there? It's just you, you get a lot of the high tech type charts that these coaches will pull out, all laminated and pretty with all the highlights. Look, June Jones. He's got his raggedy little Manila yeah. folder there carrying around. He's kind of like drawing up in the dirt. It's, it's what it's like sometimes. It's drawing it up in the dirt, and that's kind of the style that Colt Brennan plays with. Is that schoolyard type, sling it around and make something happen style. Well, I, I can tell you this too. You know, you see all the things written down, but the run and shoot is between those two ears. That guy knows so much about this offense. I'm sure he writes things down, but he, he's as creative as his quarterback. He can come up with a variety of things on his own. He doesn't necessarily have to have it written down. Warriors three for seven only on third down conversion. Still lead 28 to seven. Third and short for Brennan from the gun. There's the pressure and no fun. James came over the top, but he had his right arm on the back of the receiver intended. For C.J. Hawthorne, it'll be another first down. 
so difficult to play cornerback, either at the collegiate or the professional level. See the ball come out. He tries to go through him and get to the ball, but you can see the arm is wrapped completely around him. The official had no alternative but to throw the flag. Well, what a shame. That's the way you're taught it is to secure that, that, that receiver. Defense number five. The spot foul. Well, but that was more than secure. Yeah. He, 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 was, he was too early and too forceful, but that's, that's the come across with that front arm and rake and have the, the right arm to secure it. And he does it a little bit too early. So a first down and goal now from the one-yard line. Boy, we've been in this situation a few times here tonight. Cole Brennan already with three rushing touchdowns. And it's 28-7. to Hawaii, the number 22 team in the nation. Last week, it was number five, Wisconsin, here in Sam Boyd Stadium. And the Rebels played them tough. Need to hold these Warriors out of the end zone right now. And the whistles blow. They won't get this playoff. Number four? Maybe so. You know, as much as June Jones likes number 15 back there, he'll boot, roll out, tries to do it with his arm and does just that. Bulls up. Jason Rivers in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Hawaii. I wonder if on the sidelines, I, I'm speculating here, of course, but I'm wondering on the sidelines if Colt Brennan talked June into this saying, look, you know what, that's all well and good. You know, those running touchdowns are cool, but I gotta catch Ty Detmer. I wanna pass him for the all-time lead in touchdown passes. I'd rather have number 105 than 298 yards, right, Todd? As, as he makes way, goes over and signs a few more autographs, and here's Tyler Gronke. Well, just keep on coming right up top, stride for stride down the field with Jason Rivers, though. It's time to give it to me now. Give it to me. Feed, feed the, the beast. beast. That's right, our Del Taco. Feed the Beast defensive play. Bo Bell. Wow, we didn't think he'd be that active today against this pass-happy offense, but he has been all over the field. Just keeps on coming, and this beast will continue to hunt down and to eat throughout this Mountain West Conference schedule as they'll start Mountain West Conference play next week right here on the mountain against Utah. And they're glad to have him healthy, the blue-collar worker on the defensive side, Bo Bell. 11 tackles and a sack in three quarters, and I'm guessing that more than likely his night is done because they need to save him for the conference schedule and don't want him to get one of those fluke injuries like he did against BYU. Kealoha Polaris, the freshman, continues to impress. Well, big future for this guy in this offense. When he gets his hands on the ball, does some big things, looks good there, picking up a first down with that 11-yard rush. How many of the Hawaiian button-down shirts you think June Jones brought on the trip? Maybe that's all he owns. That's all I've ever seen him in pictures. Again to Polaris. Oh, well, you know what? You, you were superstitious. People have game shirts. That's right. Game suits, game shoes. Game you know? lays. Exactly. Hey, Toby, did you have a game lay? Did you wear a lay <laughs> on game day at BYU? You know what? I never did, actually. But you did have something you were superstitious with, right? Well, I wore that for a long time until it smelled so bad, even when it was washed, that I couldn't wear it anymore. <laughs> I'm opening myself up to much criticism here, guys, but I actually had a shirt that belonged to Brian Bosworth that I wore under oh, my pants I remember that. my last two years. Oh, number 40. Wow. How much motivation more do you need? <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's what I'm saying. That and watch a little bit of Stone Cold and you're all right, right? <laughs> there you go. Stone Cold, yeah. You know, I actually I actually gave that shirt to Dan Morgan down at Miami after I left because that's another guy that wore 44. Figuring, you know, now was he blood a little bit. Now, was he an award winner? Did he win an, an Outland or a Nagurski or Butkus when he was at Bosworth, when he was in college? I mention that because we have a guy here that probably is going to be up for a Unitas and a Davey O'Brien and the Heisman and Maxwell and everything else, and that's number 15. 
And uh, he certainly didn't hurt his chances tonight, despite the fact that he was short of 300 yards by two. <laughs> Boy, he looks sharp. Good coverage here by Milvon James. A little bit too good again. Wow. Hands all over Rice. Ryan Grice Mullen, flag comes down, so it'll be a first down, fresh set of downs. Well, let's talk about Colt Brennan, guys. Here, you got a guy who coming in, he's really got to be the front runner for that Heisman Trophy, and, and not just. Defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Not just by looking at these numbers, but what impresses you even more are the intangibles. How instinctive he is as a quarterback in this system, Toby. He makes things happen, and anybody that gets a chance to see him play in a lot of these games won't be seen, you know, like the, the, the booties and, and everybody else out there that, that are in this Heisman race. But when people do see him, they'll know that this is a special quarterback and probably the best in the nation right now. Well, well, absolutely. And the thing is, is that you talk about a guy like a Ryan Brom, and they, they lost today. And you talk about Mike Hart and, and, and Haney at Michigan, and obviously they've been struggling. And so a lot of these other Heisman hopefuls are actually falling by the wayside. While if Colt Brennan continues to win, you know, there's no doubt that he's a Heisman frontrunner. And the whole thing about the West Coast bias, you know, how many USC guys have won the Heisman the last, what, five, six years? You know what, Toby, that's a good point. But one thing, the one negative that I see is that because of the number of games that they're going to play, I mean completely off the grid. And what I mean by that is that a number of games are going to be in Hawaii the East Coast Riders, a lot of people are already going to be in bed when Hawaii is playing, and so they have to get a lot of their information secondhand. And I do believe that, you know what, I, I think there is a little bit of a West Coast bias, with the exception of USC. But we're not even talking West Coast here. We're, we're talking, I mean, this, this is genuinely far west. Back to the ground goes Hawaii. But, you know, one thing, those sports riders that wake up in the morning and and well, they can't even get it in their paper because it's so late. They right. have to check the internet for these numbers exactly. or the Monday paper and check it. They can't argue at how impressive these numbers are. And, and you know, a perfect example, you've got two incredible football players there at West Virginia that really don't, don't cancel, cancel themselves. each yeah. other out. Exactly. Yep. You know, they kind of take away from each other. Yet they're winning ball games and having fun at it. But still, for that Heisman Trophy, the individual honor. Go ahead, Toby. You were going to say something? Well, I was just going to say that Darren McFadden has the same problem in, in, in Arkansas with, with, with Felix running next to him. You know, those guys are kind of canceling each other out as well. Yeah. And, you know, in today's age with the Internet and, 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 and TiVo and all that stuff, I don't think that argument works as well about East Coast writers going to sleep and not being able to see him. I mean, there's 150 million sports channels that they can watch, you know, their highlights in the morning or the next day, and they've got the TiVo and they've got the Internet. So, you know, I, I think Cole Brennan should still be definitely a favorite, even on the East Coast. Toby? There is only one sports network, and it is the Mountain, the Mountain West Sports Network. The first network created solely for an athletic conference here, the Mountain West Conference. And let's go ahead and give Colt Brennan an award that's just as big as the Heisman, right? Our Wells Fargo Student Athlete Award goes to the quarterback coming back to play for June Jones and these Warriors, and they're certainly glad he get three rushing touchdowns tonight for the senior from Irvine, California. More importantly, now he is 16 touchdowns away from tying Ty Detmer for the all-time lead in touchdown passes in a collegiate career. Bosworth was up for the highs. Nah, he got some votes. Stop, please. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, nice catch there by Hawthorne. That's complete for C.J. Hawthorne. C.J. Hawthorne picking it up. A wide ball thrown by Gronky. Look at him go out for this one. Great effort. Wow. Gets the elbows underneath. Nice catch. By, by the way, I, I, you know what? My mind's slipping. I, remind me about his pro career. How, how things go for him there. <laughs> Boswell? <laughs> he got injured. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it yeah that's what it was. Injured. Okay. But I, you, you, will you at least please give me this? Throw me a little bone <laughs> that he was one heck of a college linebacker. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. The four guys in front of him all went to the NFL. Casillas and Brian and all those. Uh, come on. Hey. He never got touched. Oh, you can't beat that haircut, though. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, you, you can, Toby. You can beat that haircut. You can see it on the American Gladiator. No, stop, stop. Dad sporting that Jerry stop. Curl Stop. No, no, no. What? No, this is how you beat the haircut. Colt Brennan already did it. Colt Brennan yeah, beat that right. haircut. That's Come on. Strong. He had the dreads all summer long, and he shaves it, and he goes with the, the Hawaiian Islands there. Yeah, that's oh, great. Oh, wow, look at him. 
Hey, you know what, what? What's that must be like when he goes in, when he goes into the barber and says, "You know what? I need a little trim on Molokai." <laughs> Can you straighten out Kawhi for me? <laughs> is, that, is that how that works? He's over there having a discussion about his boogers on the sidelines. You see that? Oh, please. Hey, he's, he, he is loose, I told you. There's Farmer gets a little shovel pass. Hey, let's, you know, if, if we can in the truck, we got something prepared here, Toby. You know, Shane Horton, who made a, a start as a true freshman, the safety, true freshman out of uh, Chatsworth, California, his dad is Mike Horton. Now, that may not mean anything to you, but perhaps the name Gemini does. There he is, Bam. Gemini. Now, I know you know yes. this guy, Yes, Tom. I do. I do. <laughs> I know Gemini. That's his son. Yeah. Shane is his son. Sweet. Gladiators ready. Go. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, I know that you got a lot of people talking to you about the Gladiators reruns. They've been fun to watch. Well, Gronky put the ball on the money. That's not like Devon Best to drop it, but it looked under the Sweet 16. That was fun basketball season here in Las Vegas. Polaris well, still in the ball game. Stretch that one out again. About a half yard. Mario Cox was the runner. Evidently, they're giving Pol Polaris a rest. I'm sorry. That's all right. Thank you, partner. No, no problem. Also from Oaktown. What do you know about that? McClyman's High School. You know who else graduated McClyman's High School? Show, this will show my age. Bill Russell. Great Celtic. From McClyman's High School in Oakland, California. It doesn't show your age. It just shows your knowledge. No. Bill Russell. Come on. <laughs> Maybe a big Bill Russell fan. Oh, I am. Well, I mean, the, the greatest... The greatest athlete in team sport history. He has to be. 13 years, 11 rings. 11 rings. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen again. Wow. Well, I take that back. Maybe your boy Urban Meyer is going to do it down in Florida. Oh. Ooh, they look pretty good today. Well, you know, at least they, they, Urban and Billy Donovan live on the same street. At least their street may match it. Back to back for the basketball team. Wow. And and they did look good today, taking down the Vols. Wow. You know, it, it's, let this play go here to snap the Gronky in the gun one more time. And letting this one fly. Boy, was that pretty. There go the Warriors one time. Malcolm Lane, is he going to get there? Yes, he is. Gronky to Malcolm Lane. Another touchdown for the Warriors with 2.38 to go. An 80-yard connection. Pater. Now, if you're at home and you're thinking to yourself, you know, what's the deal? Are they rubbing it in? Are they trying to get extra points? I, I think that one of the issues here is that Gronke, he he's the heir apparent, and he doesn't get much playing time as a result of Colt Brennan. This is the guy that's going to be the